So welcome to Sacred Sunday. Here we are on Sunday, February the 28th, last day of this month. So welcome, welcome everybody. For those who don't know me, my name is Wendy Morrell and I will be your host, hostess tonight. And I am in Ottawa, Canada with lots of snow. So it's great to see everybody. Welcome to the new folks. There's a lot of regular Sacred Sundayers here, so you all know the drill, but I'll make sure everybody knows it. A little bit different tonight. Um, we are going to be recording and making it public. We often don't do that, but tonight we're going to do public. I am going to be using gallery view, so you will all be in your beauties wherever you are, however you are. So everybody knows that you can hide your own video if you would like to at any time or all the time. So that's totally up to you, just so that you know that. Also, I'm spotlit right now, so you should see me in the middle of the screen, depending on how your settings are. <clears throat> but we won't be using spotlight all the time, as we normally do. As I said, we'll be putting it on gallery from time to time, but everybody should know that if, and if you don't know this, this is your little learning moment, you can pin people in the center. So if you see Pule Lehua in one of the little boxes, but you'd like to see her big in the middle so you see what she's doing, up in her little box are three, usually up in the right corner are three little dots. And if you click on those three little dots, there's an option to pin somebody which means they get to be big and in the center. So you can get to play with that later on. You can try pinning all kinds of people if you like. So let's say you wanna see Meta for a moment. You can, Meta may not know she's being pinned, but you can do it. So you can visit all around, but that's just happening for you. What's being recorded is what I'm doing. <clears throat> so that will either be spotlighting someone like I am now, or um, in gallery view. And once in a while I might pin somebody or pin Pulele Hua. So it'll all happen just like magic. Isn't that the beauty of it? Did I miss anything, Pulele Hua, that you want to add at this moment? Okay. So everybody, take a deep breath, shake everything off. Whew, it's Sunday, and here we are together. Brush those. I don't know where you are in your house. Fluff up your hair. We can all look lovely tonight. Yep, that's good. Whew. So we all we start every Sacred Sunday with an opening prayer that was created when these Sacred Sundays first started way back in March of last year. I will do movement. You can choose to follow me along, or you can do your own movement. Whatever you like to do is absolutely perfect. So we just open our palms first and holding them open to receive and to give the light that's in us. <clears throat> we come together in gratitude with open minds and our hearts cracked open. We breathe and we pause. We give deep bows to the divine, the great mystery, for providing each of us our own unique journey and for the collective journey that we travel together on this amazing planet. In humility, we open ourselves for the strength and for the wisdom to value both the struggles, no matter how many we have every day, sometimes lots, but we also have amazing joys, the many, many joys that we have every day that we encounter on the road we travel. Yay. Namaste. So it is my great delight tonight to have my very good friend and longtime friend for many years, Pulele Hua from Honolulu, Hawaii. Uh, leading us tonight in Mindful Brain Dance. You all got the different um, uh, notes and the events, and I'm sure you know it, and she can add anything she would like to add. I will say that after tomorrow or the day after, you will get a link to the recording. I will send an email with a link to the recording for tonight and also some um, some handouts that Pulele who has that will think she'll go over tonight, but we will be sending those out. If I don't have your email, normally we have email registration and tonight we just said, oh, pot, let's just throw it out there. But if I don't have your email, if you could put that in the chat to me so I make sure you do get that. So if you didn't email me originally, then if you put that in the chat to me, I will get that and uh, we'll know, I'll know to send it to you. So without any further ado, I'm going to spotlight Pulele Hua just for a moment. <clears throat> so we see her beautiful in her beautiful Lenten purple. <clears throat> so over to you, Pulele Hua. Oh, your sound is off. <laughs> we need to unmute Pulele Hua. Unmute. There she but is. But I'm unmuted. I'm in the other room. My sound is from the other. I'm going to dance in the other room, but I'm going to do my introduction in here because 
you know, I like to be in two rooms at once. So it's, you know, some people like to be two things at once. I'm one of those. So welcome. And I just, I'm so happy that you're all here. It's so wonderful to see you. Um, I recommend you go into gallery views so that you can see everyone if you're on a device that can do that, so that you can see everyone in the group. Um, and at any point, you are welcome to, as Wendy said, to pin. Part of my desire about all of that is I want you to have control over your view, over what happens. This practice is all about you. So if you, what I'm directing doesn't work for you, do not do it, please. Do what does work for you. You can do this laying down, you can do this sitting, you can do this standing. If I know that people are in various positions, so if I can see you, I'll be able to tell. But if you know you're gonna be laying down through the whole session, I'll, I'll give more direction towards laying down. Does anyone think they're going to lay down? No, all right, then I will just give chair and standing directions and um, so that you can do it any way you like. And there we go. So I'm gonna start by doing this. I've never done this before, so. I'm going to do a presentation on what is mindful brain dance and where did it come from? So here we go. Aloha. So here is mindful brain dance. And today's theme or focus is interconnectedness of all. When I lead mindful brain dance every week, we have a group that meets every week. When I do this, I always have some kind of theme or focus for the, that, that particular practice. And today it's interconnectedness of all. And I have a website which is on there and you'll also get that in email later. So now no one needs to take notes on this presentation. You will get handouts later with the things that are in here. So do not worry if you say, oh, I really want that. I probably will be sending it to you. And here we go. So why mindful brain dance? Well. Mindful brain dance happened for me when my son died almost five years ago now. I couldn't exist in the world. Plus, I'd been crippled from various injuries and I couldn't get up off the floor on my own. And I was really struggling. Um, and this practice allowed me to find a way to be able to be in the world again. So that's where it came from and what it comes out of. Um, it allows us to return to the developmental movements in our first year of life. And it's also designed to empower you to move your way, feel your way, pray your way. So it's a prayerful practice, but it's also a movement practice that hopefully empowers you to be able to do all of the above. So what is it? It's a combination of brain dance, which is a practice that came was created by Anne Green Gilbert out of Seattle. And it works with the, the movement you learn in the first year of life. And we, this helps you revitalize those, or perhaps you never, for some reason, didn't connect to those. Um, she's written several books. The ABC of Learning is the first one I read, which was written in the 70s when I was in college studying to be a teacher. And it was all about movement and learning. She's written several more recent ones than that. But when I first met her, I didn't realize she was the same person. So the welcoming prayer is a practice from the contemplative outreach practice. So that's from Father Keating. It's a, a movement, it's a meditation practice. And the welcoming prayer is the meditation in the moment, in the, this moment as it is, that's combined. So I combined those two, and then you can see we, we do this regularly Tuesdays, 11 a.m. Hawaii time, if anyone would like to join us. The link is on my website. So, allowed me to live in this world again. Yay. So, hopefully, you all have a practice that allows you to live and function in the world. Um, and this is the one that I need to go back to over and over because I admit I struggle um, with depression and so I provide guidance, not direct instruction. I can provide you with way more information than you would ever want. But in the actual practice, I will say tap, but I'm not gonna tell you exactly how to tap. I will say um, swipe down. But again, I won't give you very specific because I want you to do it the way that works for you, for your body, in your place, and in your space. 
It's always about you, your body, your feeling, and how you are now. So you might one day do it one way and another way do it a completely different way. So this gives you a little bit more information about whether the eight basic moves from brain dance, and this is one of the handouts you'll get, um, the breath, the tactile, core, distal, head and tail connections, upper, lower, body sides, cross lateral, and vestibular. And with all of it, we do eye tracking, which especially in this time when many of us have been restricted to these two dimensional devices more than normal, the eye tracking is particularly important to boost your brain and to be able to see all that you need to see in the world. So I've taken these and made them a little broader. So in my imagery here, you get general images of what these are. So again, Anne Green Gilbert has very specific things that it was about, but you get to do them the way that works best for you. And that's what this practice is all about. And when I learned this practice, which again, took me back to my basics, allowed me to heal from some serious injuries I'd had and get up off the floor again, I needed a spiritual component to it. So I needed to connect out to the spiritual world. And that's the welcoming prayer. The welcoming prayer has three basic movements to feel and sink into what you're experiencing this moment in your body, to welcome what you are experiencing as an opportunity to consent to the divine indwelling and to let go. <coughs> Sorry. has the prayer at its core. I let go of my desire for security, affection, and control and embrace this moment as it is. And I will use this repeatedly throughout our practice. So there you go. There it all is in a nutshell. I combine them together and I get this great logo. It's all in one place. Amazing, way too much information in one place. This is a handout that you cannot read on this screen and I know this, so you will get it in email. But what I've done is I've taken the basic movements of brain dance, and then giving you verbalization words of how to do that with the welcoming prayer. And there we go. So this is also something you will get in your handout. Um, I find it's nice to have the welcoming prayer someplace where you can see it regularly, um, embrace it, live with it. I encourage you to take it and put it on a pretty picture you like. But if this is one that works for you, you are welcome to use it. And you're welcome to join us online anytime you like. And there we go. So I will stop this share and I'm going to go to the other room. So now I want you all to get up if you're comfortable getting up and find a place that's, that's most comfortable for you in your room. Uh, you might want to have water nearby. And here we go, look, I'm joining you. Let's all be together. Okay, I'm gonna put you in community view. So when I can see everyone, on Zoom it says gallery view, but I see these as windows into your rooms, into your home. And I see when we're all together that we're in community. So let's reach out to our community here to start. And take a deep breath. Did muting me stop you from hearing me cough? Yes, good job. Excellent to know. All right, so now we're reaching out across the world. I know that we're in various places all over and we're reaching out, out, out. And now bring your hands up above you as you feel the breath come into your body. And feel and sink into your body. Looks like everybody that I can see is standing. If you're sitting, the same movements apply. And you can wiggle a little as you bring your hands down and you feel the breath. And now in your own time, breathe and look around the room, the space that you're in. Look and see where you are, where you are now, when you are now in this space. Take a good look.
Oh, so nice. So I want you to listen to the sounds around you. These are the sounds that we'll be moving with today. This is the practice that's about being in this moment as it is. Today in particular, it's about connecting to the world that's around you and all of those things, including all of those sounds. And there's never any stillness is never necessary. So if you're someone who sways and kind of moves around, that's always a good thing. So the first part of the welcoming prayer and the mindful brain dance is the breath, which we've all been breathing and seeing where we are. And the next one is tactile. And tactile is where we touch our body to stimulate the proprioceptors, which lets you see where you are in space and time. And we're gonna do that from the top to the bottom. So we're gonna do a light tapping, however that works for you. And if you prefer a firm tapping, you can do that too. And you wanna get everywhere. So all those interesting places, Spaces. And I can see some of you are sitting and that's perfect. Sitting or standing is just right. And as you come down your body, for instance, I can't really bend over to do my feet. I would get vertigo. So I bring my feet up to me while I'm standing so that I can get all the way down tapping till I get to my feet. Tapping particularly on the bottoms of your feet is really important. As we age, often we don't get touched there very much. And we do things like step off a curb and not know that we've stepped off. And opening up the bottoms of your feet by tapping them and waking them up is very helpful. And yes, doing the sitting down is great. Several of you have gone to sitting and that's wonderful. So now as you're down at your feet, we're gonna squeeze. And so for those of you who are sitting already, you can squeeze those feet. So you want to squeeze them. The first thing when you're born is you, if you were lucky, you were born vaginally and you get squeezed. But you come out and as you feel and sink into the squeezing, welcome all that you're feeling. So you come up that leg and then switch to the other foot and leg. Squeeze. Feel and sink in. Welcome all that you're feeling, welcoming the divine indwelling, welcoming the indwelling presence. Let go of anything you don't need to hold on to as you come up, squeezing the part that you sit on, squeezing all your parts, the na'au, that space below your rib cage and your pico, where in the Hawaiian culture we say we feel our thoughts and emotions. Squeeze them all the way as you come up the body, making sure you squeeze your arms, elbows, hands, wrists. Squeeze them all. Very nice. And when you squeeze those, make sure you can get up to your neck, your face. And again, this happens the way you want it to happen. I like to make sure I get my nose and my ears and the back of my head all squeezed. And then the next motion will be a light scratching. So we spend a lot of time with the tactile. Um, because a lot of us are vintage and tactile is one of those things we don't get as much of as we might have when we were younger. And I find that it helps me then be able to do everything else and really improve my balance. So light scratching as you come down. If, you're, if some of you have someone else in the room with you, if you wanna scratch each other's back, be my guest. You can reach your back to scratch, go for it. And you're gonna scratch everything you can reach, coming all the way down and make sure you get both sides, feel and sink in. 
Welcome all that you're feeling. Welcome the divine indwelling, the indwelling presence. And let go into the indwelling presence, letting go, consenting to the divine presence within. And the last one will be swiping up. So from your feet and the ground, you're bringing energy up through the body. Up we come. Woohoo! Come up. I can feel the energy coming. Can you feel the energy coming up, bringing you up, waking you up? So the, the tactile is again about proprioceptors, about helping you find your place in space. So for instance, when you've activated your body like this, you may notice now a chair before you run into it. Um, this will help activate you so that you might not stub your toe quite so much if you continue with this practice. So the, other, the next part of this practice that I found really helps me a lot because for me, I get startled easily and I get anxious. I don't know about you guys. Well, when a baby is young, they're all curled up in the fetal position. And when they hear a loud sound, they come, they're down in the core, they jump. And they really come out of that. And we as adults don't typically. We typically, you know, stop it when we get startled. So I would encourage if you're feeling anxious to do these first three steps, the breath, the tactile, and this is called core distal, coming into the core. So this can be done in a chair or you can come all the way down to the ground if you can reach. Coming all the way down and in the, the core place, you're with the oneness, welcoming all that's around you, feeling and sinking into the body. And then as you come up into spreading out into the two-ness, into the world at large, and it can be done quickly or slowly. So this is core distal. And I invite you to do this three more times at your own speed. And remember that when you come out, you can come to the forward, backward, side to side. And if you're in a chair, it can also be done quite small. Welcome, welcome, feel and sink in. Welcome the divine indwelling and let go. Welcome, welcome, feel and sink in. Welcome to the divine indwelling and let go. Perfect. Oh my gosh, you all look so beautiful. Oh, so lovely. The next one is the connection between the head and the tail. So the tail being the tip of your tailbone, the head being the very top of your cervical spine. So you have vertebrae in your cervical, your thoracic and your lumbar spine, and we wanna connect them all. So first put out your tailbone and then try to see if you can meet it with your head bones as if they connected and just imagine they're touching. In in this work, when you can't actually do the physical thing, the imagination is enough. And then come to straight or whatever straight means to you. And now I encourage you to look to one side and then letting your, your head swoop a little bit, look to the other side. Come to the center. Look up, again, at whatever where level works for you. Coming around circular till you can go down to looking down. If this works so that it works for your head, come around in a circle till you come to center. And now turn the other direction first. Whatever was your natural direction to turn first, go the other way, turning to the side. Seeing everything you can see, using your eyes, tracking what's there, then using your eyes track to look the other way, over the other shoulder. 
Then gently swoop up, using your eyes, tracking all that you see. Look down, coming back to center. And then wiggle your head, your cervical spine, so this upper part. See if you can wiggle that now that you've moved it a little. Then we're going to come to our thoracic or our heart place. Bring your heart forward. Bring your heart up. You can bend your knees to help get the up going. Bring your heart in. Bring your heart to center. And then let's wiggle our heart. Wiggle to one side. Wiggle to the other side. As if you were reaching out to the friend in the window next to you. And then reaching to the window over here. And then using your upper body, reach to the window below you, or maybe out of the windows, and then reach to the windows above you. Again, with a wiggle. And then we're gonna to come to our lumbar or our lower spine, and we're going to do a hula move. We're gonna do an um, which is to the back, to one side, across the back to the other side, and then straight across the front. Bend your knees slightly to help you do this. So it's not a complete circle, it's like a D. Flat across the front and then come to center and then take your hip to the other side first, around the back and to the front and one more time and to the front. And now let's wiggle that part, really wiggle. Now I get, I don't know about you guys, but I get stiff when I get up out of a car in particular, or if I've been sitting a long time. If you take the time to do this wiggle, 10 seconds make a difference. 30 seconds, even more. A minute, a huge amount of time. If you do this, for me, the pain that I used to feel every time I got up now goes away as soon as I do this wiggle. And it's because it helps the synovial fluid flow through all those nerve endings. And I see the synovial fluid as the grace of God flowing through us. So, and see if you can bring the wiggle all the way up through your whole spine now. So you're wiggling from your head to your tail. Feel and sink into the body. Welcome all that you're feeling. Welcome the divine indwelling. Let go of anything you don't need. Let go of the desire for security, affection, control, and embrace this moment as it is. Okay, you look warmed up now. Now we're going to do the lower part of the body. The lower part of the body is about where your beliefs and your actions take place. So if you want to feel firm about something, stamping on the ground helps. You're sitting in a chair, same thing, feel connected to the ground. Now walk through your space and really emphasize the connection to the ground. Feel and sink in. What might you be thinking about now? What might it be for you? Feel and sink in. Welcome and let go. I let go of my desire for security affection control and embrace this moment as it is. And then we're gonna to go to the upper body and the upper body is about reaching out into the world, giving and receiving. I think most of us are pretty good at giving. Let's do some receiving. So really receiving. So I want you using your eyes as you walk through your space, see what you can receive, the beauty you see, the memories. What is it in this moment as it is? Receiving, using your upper body. Your upper body can bend. It doesn't have to just be the arms or the head. It can be all, the whole upper body. If you wanna be bringing things into you. Which I think, for me anyways, I'm less good at bringing in than I am at giving out. So I'm gonna really emphasize that today. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Yes. And 
I like that you're all taking good care of yourself. I can see you drinking water when you need, sitting when you need, moving as you like. Perfect. Because this is about empowering you in the world. So we've done the lower body, the upper body, the spine. Now we're going to do sidedness. Now sidedness, when you developed in the world, you developed, probably developed a primary side. You're right-handed or left-handed. You have a dominant side. This is a good thing because right away, you know, when you're going to reach for something, chances are, you know, which, which hand it is that's going to reach. You don't have to make a choice at that point. Um, for people who are truly ambidextrous, they have to make these choices all day long. Choices that really, you need to be able to choose to do that. So just so that you know, you have that. So incitedness is about making choices in your life. So when I have something big on my mind and I'm trying to choose what to do, I test it. So your body is like a litmus paper. Your body can help you figure out what to do. So taking one side of your body and even your face and the torso on that side, you're gonna move them in space. And if you have a choice in your life or something you're thinking about, it could be as simple as what to have for dinner. Take a look at that part of the body and see what it feels like. Does it feel comfortable? Now make sure you move your wrists and your, el and your ankles. They get to move. And if you're doing this in a chair, that's perfect too. Swing behind you, to the outside, in front of you, to the diagonal, the other diagonal, cross your body, across behind your body. And now move in the space, emphasizing that part of your body. And if you're in a chair, just move that part of your body. But you can move, I love it. I love the way you're all moving. Beautiful. Then come back to center, remembering what this question was you had, if you had one. Mine is, which thing should I have for dinner? Quite simple. Now you're gonna to go to the other side of the body. When we activate this side of the body, it's activating the opposite side of your brain. So that that's part of the reason this is helpful for choices. So rotate the wrists and the ankles, feel and sink into that side of your body, welcoming all that you're feeling, welcoming the divine indwelling, the indwelling presence. Welcome, welcome, welcome. And let go. And bringing your, your, that side of the body to the front, to the back, to the side, to the diagonal front, the diagonal back, rotating all that you can, allowing the body to flow. And then moving through the space, accentuating that side of your body. And tracking with your eyes, watch yourself as you move through the space, tracking where you're going, make a big move, see how far you can go. And coming back into your space, and perhaps you have a small space you're in, and so you're imagining bigger space, bringing it back in. And then coming back to center, returning to the breath, feel and sink into the body, welcoming all that you're feeling, welcoming the divine indwelling, the indwelling presence, and a little bit of the wiggle, and a little bit of the tactile, and a little bit of small, and a little bit of large, our lower body, upper body, our sides. And then we cross over. So this helps the brain go from one side of the brain to the other, that, that delightful 
cross over and bring the right side, one side to the other side across the body. So my upper body is crossing over to the lower body. The upper body is also going across the body. If that works for you. If, if you're limited and you can't reach the lower body, you can just cross the upper body. Or the other way around, you can just cross the lower body. All of these crossovers take us through this. Feel and sink in. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome the divine indwelling. Welcome the divine indwelling. Welcome, welcome the divine indwelling. The indwelling presence, the mystery. Welcome all that you're feeling, even if it's not something you want to feel. Welcome, 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 and let go. So now as you cross over, let go and hug yourself every way you can think of be hugged. Low, behind you, up high, over your head, behind your head, in front of your face, around your knees. Hug, all the hugs. How many ways can you hug? Hugging your legs individually, hugging just one arm with the other arm. I'm not even sure what that means. And hugging your hands, hugging your cheeks. What does it feel like to feel and sink in? Oh. Oh. Excellent. Now we're going to go to our corners. So reach an upper part of your body up to one corner of your window and a lower part of your body to another corner of your window. So you can see that image of being crossed over. And then bring your hand, if it's your arm, bring it down to shoulder level and bring it in front of your face. Now watching your hand, bring it back out to shoulder level and then up to your corner, watching it with your eyes. Tracking with your eyes and then coming back in to center. And then switch to the other arm, watching with your eyes, coming out to the side and then up to the corner, tracking with your eyes. And bringing down and back to your face. Should be in front of your face enough that you can see it without going cross-eyed. And then back out and up. Now bring your eyes to the lower corner, the part of your body that's in the lower corner. And then over to the other side of the body that could be in the other lower corner. Then back up to center. Is there a place you can look that you're looking further away than the screen or anything else? Can you look out a window? I want you to find the space where you can see furthest away. For me, I can look out a window. So you can look out a window, look out a window. And let your eyes rest as far away as they can. If you're in a room, it's rest on the other side of the room if you have no windows, but hopefully you'll be able to see out a window and rest. Now close your eyes and imagine that you could see behind you. You can see inside your head, behind your eyeballs, and then out the head as if you can see behind you. This will actually allow your eyes to adjust a different way inside their socket. And again, you're resting. And then feeling the way your eyes rest as if they're looking behind them. Open your eyes so you see out the distance. This may affect your uh, posture as well. Just that simple eye movement. And now look at something that's not as far away as the furthest point. So right now I can see a hill in the distance in the sky. But closer than that, I can see a wall in my yard. So look at something that's still kind of far away, but not as far away as you were looking. Your mid-range. And again, allow your eyes to rest there.
then close your eyes and look behind you. Feel and sink in. Now, as you've got your eyes closed and you're looking behind you, feel and sink into the body. Notice you have a particular place your attention is drawn in the body. Wherever that might be, welcome, welcome that feeling. Welcome the divine indwelling, consenting to the divine indwelling's presence and action in your life. And let go. I let go of my desire for security, affection, control, and embrace this moment as it is. Keeping your eyes closed and just noticing in your body. And you can sway, you don't need to be still. Moving is comfortable for you. And if having your eyes completely closed is uncomfortable for you, a soft gaze. Just to cut down on the stimulation and allow your eyes to rest back as if you could see behind you. And in this prayer, I let go of my desire for security, affection, control. We know that we need these things. We need them all. But this practice to feel and sink into the body, to welcome what you're feeling and welcome the divine indwelling is consenting to the divine's presence and action in your life to take place, to be with you, providing that security, affection, control. And breathe and then do a top to bottom shake. Let's do a shimmy, a shake, a rattle, a roll. Shake them. <clears throat> ah. So the last of the eight deliciousnesses of the brain dance is the vestibular system. And the vestibular system is about balance and it's your eyes, your ears, and those proprioceptors that allow you to find your place in space. So what we do is we do an activity to disturb those till you get just a tiny bit dizzy. And as soon as you're dizzy, you pause because the healing happens in the pause. The healing happens in the stillness. We just bring on the dizziness to make it happen. Now, if you are someone who gets dizzy easily, I suggest you do the sitting down and you're gonna tilt from side to side and then you're gonna tilt for the first time and then we'll pause. And then we're gonna tilt from side to side. So first it'll be forward and back, but I'll, I'll talk you through it. For those of us who want to move more, we're gonna do turning. Both activities, when you're doing this, you use your eyes to see things. That's part of what's making you dizzy. And when you move, the ears happen and sort of the appropriate receptors. So make sure you see things when you move. And if it's too dizzy, stop. You don't wanna be but just a little dizzy. So now I'm gonna encourage you to walk in a circle in your space, whichever direction you want first. And look at everything in the room, wherever you are. See everything. And if you're sitting, you're tilting from side to side. Or no, front and back, I'm so sorry. Front and back is your first front and back, tilting, looking. And then we pause into the stillness. And now everyone pause, even if you don't feel very dizzy, just pause, let the stillness come upon you. For those sitting, you're gonna be tilting side to side next. For those moving, I want you to move, if you did not get very dizzy, I want you to move faster and make sure you're using your eyes, but go the other direction now. So now we go the other way around in the room, we're making a big circle or big-ish circle, rather than just turning in place. <clears throat> I let go of my desire for security, affection, and control, and embrace this moment as it is. 
Welcome, welcome, welcome. Feel and sink in. Welcoming the divine indwelling. And now pause. And look at something that's not moving. You could look at the screen, but you don't have to look at the screen. You can look at anything that you like. Feel the dizziness come fall out of you. Settle in and heal your vestibular system. You're becoming more and more robust every moment, stronger, more able to see things. So one of the reasons we use our eyes so much in this practice is that often when we've been wounded, we start looking down, which sets us up for falling. We need to look out because we can see what's out there. We don't have to look out 100 feet, but we can look out five feet. And this keeps us upright and helps us stay balanced. So now we're gonna do this again, but this time when, if you're turning, you're gonna turn in place and see if you get a little bit dizzier. If you're tilting, you tilt forward and back first. Again, using your eyes. And then turn in place. I let go of my desire for security, affection, and control. I can see everything in the room spinning and embrace this moment as it is. And as you pause, look at something that you enjoy. Feeling the healing from top to bottom. Your whole being is being healed as you're consenting to the sacred presence in your life. Whatever that presence is. If I've used a word that you didn't like, please use the word that works for you. Whatever you conceive as the divine, that presence, whatever that might be for you. And now we're going to unwind the other direction or tilt side to side. And this is our last time through. I let go of my desire for security, affection, and control. And embrace this moment as it is. I got very dizzy that time, so I did not last very long. Those of you who are still turning, I'm assuming are doing good. And if you could now pause and look at something restful for you. And then I'm going to do a one minute review of what all the parts were of the mindful brain dance. We start with the breath. So breathe in whatever way works for you. I recommend starting on an exhale. Letting go, breathing in, feeling and sinking in. Then we come to the tactile. So whatever tactile you like the best, tactile your whole being. And as you tactile down to the feet, come into this small place, the core, the oneness, and reaching out to the distal, the tuneness the worldness, and then the head tail connection is a wiggle, a shimmy of the spine, letting all of those synovial fluids flow throughout your whole, your whole system, your whole neurological system gets boosted, that vagus nerve, it's happy. Oh, I can see some of you are making sounds too. Oh, perfect, <laughs> lovely. And then the lower body where we hold our beliefs and our faith. Feel something, what is your, what do you feel here? For me today, it's gratitude. And then take whatever that is for you and reach out into the world, bringing back into you all that you need. And then the sidedness. making those choices. And then the cross lateral, coming out to the corners and back in, and the vestibular. So turn or tilt yourself just for a moment. And there we go. Perfect, you're all perfect. So now 
we get to come forward and um, be in community again in our lovely windows into our lives. And for all who would like to, this is where, when we do this weekly, this is where we share our prayers and concerns for our community and for ourselves. And because we're a larger group today, I would like you to put them in the chat. So if you can find the chat, if you could type into the chat, your prayer concerns for the world right now and for your, for whatever it is for you right now. So just go ahead and put them in the chat and then we'll read them and hold them all in community. So I'm typing in the United Day of Prayer, which is next week, Saturday, March 6th, that it helped bring peace into the world. And then, Wendy, would you like to yes. read these? I will, thank you. So I have some that is from Judith, friends looking for sobriety and abstinence, a prayer for them. From Ken, everyone, everyone can dance together. From Apulele Hua, we read that from Elizabeth, planetary peace, abundance, well-being, health, safety. From Lynn, peace for all. From Barbara, healing for the earth, water, and environment. From Debbie, prayers for my dad who is healing and for my mom. From David, from Hong Kong, hi David. May we all celebrate our shared sacredness in dance. From Rosemary, hey Rosemary, prayer for the homeless that they will find homes. Natalie, people who are grieving, many of those. Emily, prayers for books for babies, yay. From Margie, healing for our species and our planet. From Susan, I pray for peace and unity for all. We are all one. From Elizabeth, health for my dad and for myself. From Jennifer, healing for those excluded by discrimination. From Marlena, a suffering family member who needs peace, inner peace. From Jean, peace and harmony. From Maria, healing for the earth and planetary peace. From Stephen, for nomads, migrants, refugees, and the homeless. Natalie, oh, I think I read that one. People who are grieving, but I'll read it again. For Betsy, those who are eligible for the COVID vaccine but cannot yet get an appointment. Yes, sending out love and prayers. From Meta, prayers for my friend Adrian to Adrian, who lost the third of her three children this week. Our deep prayers for Adrian. Mm. Jean, my friend who is getting a pacemaker on Tuesday to Jean's friend. Elizabeth, thanks for my mom who is watching from above to Elizabeth's mom. Heather, prayers for all those experiencing loneliness. Stephen, for Rafiq and those suffering with mental illness. Elizabeth, peace, the earth, refugees, nomads. Jean, for my daughter's medical practice. Wow. So much love and peace and kindness and compassion being sent out. Healing from losses of friends and family due to these dreadful times. Wow. For all who are dealing with trauma. For and, peace, love, and, and Wendy, do you, Wendy, do you have something you would like to share? I do. Well, you know, I, I want to thank everybody, but uh, tonight I, I usually pick a quote. No, no, me. I just need prayer. You can't, you can't me? do that part yet. Just the prayer part, Sorry. and then I close, and then you can do it. Wait, one more minute. <laughs> one more minute, and then you get yes. it back. I'm giving you your five minutes. Do I you have a prayer. Sure. That's okay. That's thanks, Pulelehua. <laughs> I pray for everybody who is trying to connect one with another, and I think that is. We're sending that all on all planets, in all places. So thank you all. And, and I think I cut you off when you said for peace, love, and joy in each heart. Mm -hmm. And for your friend, Jean, who fell and broke her pelvis and his partner. So now I would like you all to reach down. We have a basket. It's a worldwide basket that's between us all. And we're going to go down here. We're going to reach up this basket and we're going to lift it up. It's kind of heavy and yet light. And we're going to swish and let it all go and as we let it go 
We know that the gifts of God's grace and love are flowing into us and around us. And all those places that got opened up by this practice today. And yay. So thank you all for this deliciousness. Mm. And back to Wendy, the queen of the day. <laughs> thank you. A big round of applause for Pule Lehua. <laughs> yay. It's been so delightful having you here with us. And for everybody who Zoomed on in and danced on in and found their way, I'm grateful, grateful, grateful. Every Sunday night I say this, and I mean it from the bottom of my heart. It is truly one of the hours of my week that I so look forward to. I never know who's coming. And it's it's the, every week it's a different person who facilitates or puts it together. And it truly is joyful. You are always invited. You are always welcome. So two things. If I don't have your email, I mentioned this at the front end, but some people joined us. If you don't think I have your email, please put that in the chat because I will be sending a link to the recording. I will be sending Pulele who is... Um, uh, handouts. So you will want to get those tomorrow tomorrow or the next day. So if I don't have your email, put it in the chat and I will make sure you get it. For everybody who was at the amazing festival last weekend and David Lung, thank you for coming. He was one of our faculty last weekend. Um, the recordings will be going out, I think, tomorrow. So what's your email for that? If you were at the festival, everybody will get that. Next week is International Women's Day and it's the first Sunday of the month is always our um, uh, film night, film festival. So next month, next Sunday night, we will be watching little films from International Women's Day. So if you have something that you love or that you'd like to see, you know, if it's not too, too long, send that to me or send me an email. You have my email. Send that to me and I'll make sure that that gets included in our film festival next week. It's always a nice time and everybody gets a front row seat. So that's kind of cool. That's really fun. Um, so I will end with a quote. I often pick these quotes. As I said, I, I collect all these quotes. So if you have really cool quotes, I love those. Something to do with dance. But this one, and it's often from dancers, but this is from Albert Einstein. And Albert says, human beings, vegetables, or cosmic dust. We all dance to a mysterious tune intoned in the distance by an invisible player. So I invite us this week to tune in to those invisible players, the divine, the other people, the people who have already left this planet. Who do you hear this week? What are the invisible players that you are dancing to that tune for? So have a wonderful, wonderful week, everybody. Enjoy your time embrace this and look forward to lots of emails from us it's been delightful having everybody thank you so much for being here bye bye <laughs>